531. Um, are there any revisions to the agenda? Okay. <clears throat> are there any public comments or correspondence? Executive Committee comments. Quick, uh, quick things. One, can I request an updated calendar of meetings? I'm not sure where I Hopefully, speak. we'll know more after tonight. Oh, okay, great. Believe me, I was just trying to get my own meetings <laughs> figured out. Yeah, and all good. the other ones, Same literally at 4 30. Okay, thanks. And then the other thing I wanted to check. Since I wasn't at that last SU board meeting, did the pre-meeting was that useful at all? The meeting of oh, the four thirty to five thirty. People, if they wanted to come early, did, did uh, show up? Yeah. No, I I'd say I want to say there were fifteen people there. I didn't uh -huh. count them actually. Yeah. Um, and they came with questions. I guess I'm probably the wrong person to ask if it was the if it was helpful or not. Yeah. I, I think it was. I think I think it was helpful. It, it was. It, it made our meeting a little bit too long, though, for, right. for, for us, us right. that were participating. Yeah. It felt yeah. like we had to. It, it was that we had to duplicate because they really were there to make uh, some of them to make a point, not necessarily to oh, talk okay. about so their clarify you know, question. The clarifying question and the articles of agreement was not really the subject. You know, we went through them, but yeah. it was we, good. I think no, it was we, good. We stayed pretty well on task. We didn't get. Yeah. Off track, but, just but then our regular meeting went a half an hour over, so we ended up being there from 4:30 to 8, I guess it was, which was a long, yeah. a long yeah. stretch. But okay, I was just curious. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of September 19th? So moved. Okay, second. I'll second them. I read them. I was not here, but I, yeah. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I had, I had one thing, Lisa. Okay. These are awesome. I feel bad even pointing this out, but there's a, <laughs> someplace the word incumbent is in here. E -N -S, oh, it's in 2.1.1. <laughs> yeah. And it's supposed it, to be incumbent? <laughs> so I think it's an I and then an E at the end. Okay. Sorry. But, yeah, no. I'm just trying to prove to everybody, yeah. prove everybody that I read them. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're taking Alan Gilbert's place. Yeah. That's right. that's that's exactly. only yeah. 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 And you wrote Matthew everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Find and replace. Uh, <laughs> any other comments or edits to the, the minutes? All those in favor of approving the minutes of September 19th, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thanks. Discussion agenda. Determine the WCSU budget meeting date. So, so yes. Um, so we had said that um, the service plan was finished on Monday and sent to the state. And last time we had talked that, um, you know, probably about 63, 64 percent of the budget is driven by the service, by the special ed expenditures and revenues. Mm -hmm. So right now, Lori and Kelly and I are working the next couple of weeks to get that figured and put that into the Washington Central budget so we can have a full Washington Central budget for you. And thinking about the budgeting process, and I can get into more context if needed, Matthew, about timelines and dates and all that again, um, that we thought we'd have a second meeting it was determined at the last meeting we'd have a meeting in between our two executive committee meetings, so you would have two chances to look at the budget, one in early November, one in late November, before December. Um, I'm just going off the regular old calendar, that mm -hmm. if there's a need for adoption from the SU, that that usually happens the first Wednesday in December. So, Lori and I looked at the calendar. It's funny you brought that up, Kari, because we're trying to um, get all the calendaring going. Um, two possible dates we looked at were November 5th and November 6th, 
the six would have to end by seven o'clock though. Um, I have a commitment at seven o'clock online that I can do here. Um, I just need to go jump on my computer. So I don't have an online meeting. Um, and we could look to other dates, but there are quite a quite a few other things and we don't think we're gonna be ready with the budget until the Monday before Halloween, which I believe is the 29th, mm -hmm. without having my calendar out. So we're, we're trying to hit the Friday before with the budget all set. Um, but we're not essentially sure that we're gonna, actually, yeah, I'm sorry, we talked about this last week, sorry, Laura, you, Kelly and I talked about this on Monday, that we're trying to hit by the 30th to the 31st with the budget all set. So you're, you're looking for a date for the executive committee to meet just to, to meet to, to go over later. the budget, tell you tell you where we're at with it, what's it look like with the level of service, um, you know, get some feedback on that. Then our normal meeting in November, uh, right now is should be scheduled. For, we'd like to have it somewhere like the twentieth, because if we did it on the twenty eighth, if there were revisions from this committee to go out for a full board. SU board meeting to adopt the budget in December on the December 5th, we'd have like one day to turn it around. So um, I could show you all this with a calendar if that would help, but right. it's just trying to figure out all that. So I, I would just note that three of our usual executive committee members aren't here, so right. it's a little bit tough to, to kind of say, but we could certainly pick dates. Or I can do a doodle poll with those two days and see what we can yeah, I mean, I, I guess just an informal poll, like, does any, do people have preferences, or do we want Bill to do a survey, or? I'm going to call through next Saturday. I know Stephen is going to be traveling around. I know, I, I, sure. I know already the sixth works better for me, but. And the, the fifth is impossible for me. Yeah. So, because so, I just, we get seven, I mean, I can start listening, but we literally plot it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start meeting every night from there until the night to the 20th. Yeah. Well, let's go. I would say, unless there's any objection or other idea, like let's go with the sixth for now, unless okay. it's totally impossible. So I'm going to do like a five thirty to seven, and it would really be one topic. It would be budget. Yeah, yeah. Unless you want yeah. to add others. I wonder what about the seventh. So the seventh is U thirty two meeting. Right. What about an hour before the? Um, well, usually that's Adrian's. It's the only time that we can get Adrian for Adrian, Stephen, and I to sit down and chair our superintendent sure. meeting is from five to six. Not that it couldn't happen because Adrian and I, we do a lot of phone call exchange too, just because of her work situation. It's fine. Six, six more. Okay. And then you were saying like, so tentatively on the twentieth. Tentatively on the twentieth, right now, um, because if we went to the twenty eighth. You know, twenty first is the day before Thanksgiving. So I, I get it. Yeah. So <laughs> it, this is it. Just we're getting into days in November, and yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we could probably go the twenty. And Laurie's, please kick me if I'm saying the wrong thing, Laurie here, because you're the one doing um, the details. If we went to the twenty sixth, which is a Monday, I could live with that. You could live with that. Mm -hmm. And Thanksgiving the week before. Right. right. I'm fine with the 20th, but it, as soon as two days ago, I, I wouldn't have been. Yeah. We just changed around. Most people, yeah, plans. I understand it. So I have no idea. Traveling can happen, happen. Thanksgiving, I get all that. So so what is the date? Just so I take notes through. Well, I'm going to send, we're going to send stuff, but you can take notes on it. Just that, so I we could go with either the 20th or the 26th, and I could pull that as well. Let's let's do it that one, yeah. Okay. So we'll go for the 6th, either the 20th or the 26th, and... Dorothy, I'm gonna take back my pen. Yeah, have it. Here's the Sounds good. Okay, we'll get out email. You'll start to see appointments for your November local board meetings. Happy I soon. just got one. Today. Yes, because Krista, Krista just started. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, remember we? Cause I, it's a long story, but anyway, she's uh, she's getting those out, and that's why you haven't seen them, Carrie, because we weren't sure what was happening in November. Sure. This is part of the... So sorry, the second day, and that'll be in what? Yeah, you know, the uh, 20th or 26th, and I'm going to do a doodle poll. Okay. That we'll get out. 
Okay, 2.2, uh, Act 46. So first there's a twin field update. Yeah, we met with, um, so I think Stephen, did Stephen talk to the executive committee after the first, did he give an update? Okay, so we've had two meetings with twin field. One Stephen was able to be at, and one Scott was able to be at. Um, Mark and I went through and looked at some givens. Uh, Patrick, the chair from Twin Fields, has been really good. Uh, Patrick Healy, right? Um, has been really good about giving us some detailed questions about you know what would be the opportunities for students for doing this. Um, so we did that. What came, we wrote some written responses back to that from both Twin Fields. So it's kind of like, what are the different programs? What are the different extracurriculars? A lot of it's very similar, just different names. What they call their mentoring program, what we call ours, what we call branching out, what they call, you know, for kids to do an independent study, something they call it. Residence. 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 Yeah, so I think <coughs> different names. Mm -hmm. um, the place, then what we came out of that second meeting was, well, if we were first from Orange, what would be the game plan to make that happen? So Mark and I were tasked <coughs> with bringing together the staffs of both of our central law. Not Mark and I were tasked to do that. He and I both quickly said, we can't do this alone. We need to bring our central office staffs. We're having a hard time scheduling it. But we can put all the central office staff around the same table. Um, you know, to try to start to make an outline of how that would happen, what would be the pieces we would need to go through. Not to do the work, but just to say, what are those big things that need to be figured out? What, uh, what um, aspect of it are you looking at? All of it operationally, just central office operations. Yeah. That we didn't ask anything else than that. Okay. You know, so it's like I'll just give you a Lauren and I conversation. Was so like how many how many check runs? We know what their check runs like. How many <laughs> checks do they have in a check run? What's their average check run? Uh -huh. Right? Because I can Lauren can say, well, I think it takes you know twenty minutes per check to process that. What's the number of invoices that you hand out to people? You know, what's that process? Because you got to start to start thinking. So, what's that mean for personnel time? Yeah. For servicing. Sure. How many kids are on child count? How intense are those kids? Because you can have sixty kids in one place and sixty kids, and the amount of time to service those sixty kids can be very different mm -hmm. depending on the. So we have ways we've looked at that. So we have to bring together the special ed directors, curriculum director, business manager. Technology is a little bit easier because they contract out for their technology right now, but. Just to say, if this were all going to be one central office, how would that be? What would be the things we need to go look at and determine? Mm -hmm. Not to come up with what the determination is, just to have a game plan. Got it. So, we're trying to get that. And I don't know where. What are the next steps, I guess? That's or the next step, is to do that step. and come back and report back to that group. And Mark and I, are, we're going to see each other tomorrow. So we're Of course, the parallel track is how would we merge on the governance level? Well, we don't know, and so I don't. I don't think it's worth even trying to tackle that right now until you say, "Hey, forget whatever the governance is. If you're going to be one single SU, what do you need to service that?" You know, and we know that Twin Fields two thirds of the Washington Northeast budget, and they have seven people in their central office. So if you do the back of the envelope, it's three, it's four point three 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 FTEs that are kind of being paid for. Right. I feel that's not exactly right, mm -hmm. you know, but that's yeah. just the back of the envelope easy way to look at the issue. Mm -hmm. But you've got to say, you know, what are the what are the different parts, and how do you do that servicing? What about from an educational standpoint, like to Patrick's question, the, the, the sort of. So I think a lot of the programs are saying, but they've tackled them very differently than we have. From what I know, I, Nancy and I used to talk about this a lot before Nancy Thomas retired as the superintendent mm -hmm. there. Um, I think you get to the same place, but it's a different way of coming at it. They've really come at, we've come at really through proficiencies and aligning curriculum, where they came in through, through personalization and personalized learning plans. Um, we have to, both have to have both, and those could be good supporting pieces. Um, that's just how they tackled that. Um, you know, they had, um, I want to 
to say it's about 380 kids right now in Twinfield. So um, they have different configurations based on their changes in sizes at grade levels. So they don't have a lot. They don't have a lot of debt. They have their own transportation. We contract out, so they are buying their own buses. So that's some of their debt. They have some a little bit left on doing renovations mm -hmm. from a boiler project. Uh, a couple years ago, they put new boilers into the field. Mm -hmm. But um, you know that their building is the same age as ours. It was all done in the late '60s when all the f they took the Vermont State took the, all the federal money that was coming in for construction and put it towards consolidation. So pulling out the single K twelves mm -hmm. schools and towns and putting them into a merge. I mean, there's about 25, 30 high schools in Vermont that were built that time. Mount Abe, Mount Abraham, Mount Abe, Mount Anthony, mm -hmm. ourselves, uh, Otter Valley, uh, North Country. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of go down. Some of them are, have single town names, some of those schools, but mm -hmm. a lot of union high schools were probably about that time. The building needs some work. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I spent the last three years doing their renaissance program, just mentoring there. And they are, you know, it's, it's, it's different to our school, but they're all really, there's a lot of really great teachers. And proficiency is uh, the reason I'm not mentoring this year, because, you know, the proficiency between the teachers is still really hard for them to, it's a uh, fair. Uh, I think they are where we were two years ago, even though they started sooner. Yeah, I mean, they did a lot of work. They did a lot of work for several years, and I think we still are with the higher ed collaborative on personalized yeah. learning plans. They got recognized in the state as being someone that did a lot of that work, and the, the residence brought it is part of what came, you know, came through it. Came from that work. They, they, they saying, that yeah, to say, you know, we really personalized a kid's education and. It, it's both routes get you there. It's how you want to go. Hmm. It really, it, and that's really what's happening in Vermont. If we were to look at all the seven through twelve work, some people are going personalized learning plans. Some are going proficiencies. And once they finish one of those, they got to go do the other. Like right now, there's a committee starting up in, at U32 on personalized learning plans. We've had personalized learning plans, but to really, to really get them deep. So, so. <clears throat> the eight, the secretary in the report <clears throat> recommendations didn't prescribe anything for Twinfield. It Left said, them out for the time being. They said probably within they would join one or two, one of the two S. They're, they're 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 us. Us. And are they expecting that the board will include them in their final recommendations in October or November? Um, I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they are. Okay. Uh, the way Mark and Patrick talk. Um, you know, the conversations I've had with Mark. They'll be part of the final sorting here. They think so. Yeah. I, I don't think they really know. I mean, I just didn't know him. They haven't tackled it. I know Mark was at the meet the state board meeting today, but I know he decided to go. That's what he told me a couple days ago that he was going to go. So are they still talking with Barry, with Spotlight too? Yep. Or, yeah. So yeah, they, they're talking with both. Both, okay. I'm really sorry, I realize so, I was here late, but can we back up as to why, like, would there, so the reason that we're considering any sort of anything with Twinfield is because the Board of Education may, would it affect us? Like, what, what are the advantages to us of, of doing this? Does it get us into a more efficient number, as far as number of students? Um, or is this just something that has to be done, so we have to find a place for them to go, so, so somebody has to do it? So to give you some background, uh, two years ago when Nancy Thomas retired from Washington Northeast, the state board has had the authority since the 20s to reform SU boundaries whenever they want. Yep. And they said to Washington, they have done this to a few other supervisor unions as well, that they have said, that are small, they have said, we will not support a superintendent going past a certain date. Washington Northeast was told that two years ago when Mark Tucker, who had been then this special ed director, mm -hmm. assumed the superintendent's duties from Nancy, that he was on a two year, that it was two years and then they would, Washington Northeast would be given to other supervisory unions. And the plan just reiterated that directive that the board had given. And so they're actually looking at, um, <coughs> there's no final, uh, they did, in the plan they talked about Twinfield but not about Cabot. Right. Uh, Cabot's, they tried to do a merge, 
they had a vote for merger with Danville, Cabot, and Twinfield to make, and that did not pass. It passed in Twinfield. But it didn't but pass in Danville, right? It didn't pass in Danville or Cabot. Oh, Cabot didn't pass no. either. So no. they're wayward on their own because they voted it down. No, they're back into discussions about, they're back with Caledonia Central, which is Danville, to talk about where that goes. And we've had some conversations with both the Cabot and the Twinfield boards over the last three years, visited some of their board meetings, um, talked with the board chairs from time to time about sort of the status of what they were doing to respond to Act 46 and what we were doing. Um, and, you know, I think without, I can't speak for every board member, but I think the consensus of late has always really been and that it sort of drove this decision to open this conversation. But the consensus has always been that there are there are possible advantages to our discussing collaboration, both with Twinfield and Cabot, regar regardless of how our own governance situation resolves. What would those over. advantages be? Well, just to explore, we're look, looking at exploring that, but essentially, um, you know, that there is, um, you know, greater power and greater numbers, um, that with more facilities and more staff, there's more opportunities potentially to offer education for kids, um, things along those lines, yeah, so. But, I mean, the, the idea of opening the conversation was to really explore that, and, you know, see if that actually is the case or, or not, and so it's very preliminary stages, really, at this point. Um, but that's kind of the history of kind of how we, and then, you know, Cabot at this point, as Bill just mentioned, is because I think of, to some extent, of what the secretary said in its recommendations, um, you know, really is engaged heavily in a, in a separate conversation with um, Caledonia. So that's why we haven't sort of opened that conversation with them. So I guess my one question I had is I don't know if you've, and I, I can't remember the charge actually, even though it was very recent, I don't remember what we said. So I don't know if you've had a conversation with Mark or sort of what the, what's the goal of the conversations? Like, is there a well, time I think, that, that? I think they're, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you did a nice job of bringing the context back there, Matthew, and saying that, you know, for three years we've had these on and on, on again, off again. And I think um, right now there's a little bit of uh, trepidation on Twin Fields mm -hmm. part. Um, I think we, have been, um, while well, there have been times where there have been conversation that we can talk about anything, that's getting pulled back a little bit. Mm, I see. Uh, because, oh, wait a minute, we're really talking about this, I think, mm -hmm. is some of the pieces. So, um, I think we need, we're trying to, re I'm trying to navigate that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's because people, many people in this office, I had a conversation with the employees here. You know, people say, does that mean I don't do or do not have a job? Do I have to right. apply for my job right. next year? <clears throat> yeah. Right. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. And, you know, that's, that brings about the nervousness. Mm -hmm. And it starts up conversations that um, makes people, you know, that's, um, there have been conversations that have happened that I'm trying to say to folks that's not a necessity, but, you know, at one point there was conversation around, hey, would would Twinfield close its high school? Patrick actually brought that to one of our conversations. Mm -hmm. um, right now, if that gets said, and I, I'm saying that carefully here, that uh, that is not the conversation right now. But people are fearful that that Twinfield's gonna get shut down. Right. When you look at numbers, um, and you look at, I mean, that's the same conversation we have within Washington <coughs> Central. And we're all losing students. The, we have the preliminary enrollment, which is, we're down. Right. But again, so we had it forecasted, <clears throat> but we're gonna keep it dropping. Right, and Review 32 expects that to only get worse with the loss yeah. of the Roxbury students. But not only that, I'm just talking I mean, about, yeah, just, from our, natural, just from our five towns, yeah. we're did, dropping did, students. Did um, Twinfield at any time even tentatively indicate whether they draw the goal with Barry or with us? No, they haven't. They're exploring both to know what, I think, to see what their options are. Or do they petition to do something different? I mean, that they have not, I haven't, I didn't keep up with the list today of which SUs were being talked about at the state board. I know there was a list, uh, but I don't think Twinfield was on that today. I think well, that, 
from what I, I know, from, I got some emails late today. It wasn't. It wasn't mentioned yeah. of any of that. Yeah. Done. So. so. I guess just, you know, I don't want to go too far down this conversation because I don't know where we'll get to with it, but it sounds like the issuance of the state plan is going to overtake this conversation mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of yep. set around how it is. Yep. I think it is. Fair enough. Okay, thanks. So we can move to 2.2.2, .2, which is the Articles of Agreement and Debt Subcommittees that we, uh, the SU Board set up at its last meeting. Um, I believe both are set to have their first meeting on Monday, next week, yeah. two days before the SU Board meeting. Um, you know, just takes time to pull those together. Uh, so there's not really much else to say. No, it took a, it took a, two doodles to get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, everyone. And that's it. Should for November trying to. <laughs> everyone's everyone's busy. I mean, that's it's, yeah. it's it's basically three weeks out right now to schedule something. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So I'm sure we'll talk about that on Wednesday uh, at the uh, SU board meeting. So we're going to come back to the Act 46 stuff. I I do have a suggestion for. Maybe I should wait till we talk about the agenda. For the SU board? Meeting? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll get we'll get down there. Um board goals. Uh, on goal number one, the governance. Um, we Chris McVeigh and Chris Winters had volunteered to uh, give a little report out on the <laughs> results-based governance model at this meeting. Um, as you can see, neither one of them is here uh, tonight, so. Um, and and uh, Chris Winters, you know, apologized. He just sort of messed up the schedule and thought the executive committee meeting was next week, and uh, Chris McVeigh's out of town. So I think that we can just move that to, we can table it until our, uh, one of our November meetings. Um, and we can probably cover results based on appreciative inquiry at the same time and still stay on track to kind of report something out to the SU board <clears throat> in December. Um, so I guess I would just propose to do that. I am, I am interested to know if there's anybody who is willing to uh, look into appreciative inquiry governance model um, for reporting out on it sometime in November. It's really pretty simple. It's just... I can actually, I have some readings about that model that I could give out. It's really just scanning Google for however long you feel like you want to. And, uh, and then, it's an inquiry. It's an appreciative, it's an appreciative <laughs> inquiry. Yeah, be very positive about your, uh, your questions you ask. And then um, just bring you back what you learn in summary form and maybe some you know, links to things that people can read on their own if they're so moved. So that's all it really entails. But. I'd be happy to. Volunteer for that. Um, is that for next for next meeting? I think we can do it. Do whichever, we'll, whenever our second meeting in November is, let's do it at that one. Okay. Okay. We'll have to try to do it. And that. you say you have some appreciative inquiry governance. I have a couple of yeah. Okay. I have a couple of things because the place where my wife works uses it as their board uh, governance. Where's that? Uh, the food bank. Mm -hmm. cool. the food bank. Um, I also wanted to mention that I, I was reading the um, USBA newsletter last night as I was falling asleep, and there's a piece on the what is it the essential work of of school boards, and that the the what we we've received and they referred to it as a model of governance, and, and I, as I was reading, it, I was like, oh yeah, it is a model of governance, and, and in in a way, I mean, at least speaking for U32, that is the model that we've. We've, when we talked about our governance model, that's, that's what we've kind of referred to. So it might be another thing to throw into the mix. The essential work? The essential yeah. work of school boards. Uh -huh. Are you familiar with it? Well, I know, yeah. it, I know it from VSBA yeah. communications, yeah. but I, mean, I can't say I've ever really like studied it. Or, like, I, I never There's thought no, of it in the same way. That, <clears throat> yeah. Workshop that you can take. It, it's not as prescriptive as, say, policy governance, but it does cover the essential work of school boards. So. It's, it's worth talking about. 
Okay. So you want to go go solo on appreciative inquiry? Sure. All right. All right. Thanks. Appreciate that. So goal number two: student learning. And, yeah. Right. So um, at the last. Um, SU board meeting, I wasn't there, but there was a proposal um, that the committee made um, that we hope will um, be approved in some form next week. And basically, we are would be asking the leadership team to come up with a plan to accomplish significant improvement in both literacy and math scores. This is what we've concluded is really needed um, based on the data last month in the report. So, um, there was a secondary piece to that, which is somewhat related, but somewhat not, which was uh, to have a presentation from the leadership team at some point. I don't know when this would be. But it's not next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> to, 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 get you the goal to follow up, basically, on the retreat <clears throat> and yeah. get a better understanding of where we stand relative to, in, our, in our system relative to those best practices that were presented. So I'll tell you, you will get a little bit of that, because I've asked the team to talk about linking it. It's, the retreat, while Nate Levinson was the person that presented that, he's really referencing what multi-tiered system supports. It, it, it's the good work that's it happening seems nationwide. Very yeah, so, so um, I've asked folks to look at that and to look at when we talk about what our recommendations, and I'm in the midst of finishing up the student learning monitoring text report um, right now, and it's going to reference that a lot of the work in which we're, you'll see connections to what Nate talked about. Our biggest issue is time. Mm -hmm. We don't have the time in the system to instruct the kids. Mm -hmm. we to do just, you know, interventions? No, or what? no, just overall required time oh, for instruction is not there. Mm -hmm. And that's what you'll see in my report is that mm -hmm. the time for schooling, the, literally kids probably have about three to four hours of instruction a day for all content areas. Do we have different requirements than other successful school districts? Uh, we don't have different requirements. We use our time differently. Okay. How does it get used if it's not being used for instruction? Sure. So, just an example. There's an, there's an, probably an hour and a half out each day for kids for either recess, snack, lunch, time. That's an hour and a half out of six hours. <laughs> you have to eat. No, I'm not saying not to. I'm not saying not to. But they eat or have recess. But I mean, That's presumably all schools can have like a similar yeah, amount of time right. for recess and lunch, right? No. No. So we have more recess, yes. lunch, and snack time than most than some other successful districts. Yes. So why don't we eliminate some recess? So. But there are no. things, no, just, just, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> Which is way too right. simplistic about this. It's probably just turn Xing out and lunch. No, I'm not. <laughs> not eating. They only eat if they pass their literacy <laughs> test. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so what else, please? We have a hundred minute variability in the way we provide instruction in our unified arts across our elementary schools. There's a hundred minute difference, which is almost two hours a week of instructional time. We do a lot of we do a lot of our instruction is done um, very much at elementary schools like a high school model where it's not integrated. It's individual content. Laura's great about talking on why aren't we using our literacy time to teach math, reading nonfiction books for science and social studies. But we're moving in that you know, it's just the curriculum is not there, but we're doing at schools more project based, which is what we're doing at the high schools, so, but I very slowly, very slowly. So we, um, you know, there's some there's some places in which we six and a half hours were about the least amount of time in school for kids a day of most of our surrounding elementary schools of our neighbors. We have a shorter time for con we don't have the shortest, but we have a shorter time for contracted time for teachers. Mm -hmm. So can we expand that? Well, yes, that but that's going to... That's a negotiation. It's a cost. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. all this is cost. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's back to... This is why I go back to what are your priorities? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that has to be determined first instead of trying to say to do everything because then we can say, how do we want to do this and where, what's the, what are the resources to put towards that, to the money, you know, money resources. And you know, are we okay with? Do we want small class sizes or do we want big class sizes? Because those cost. Those are different pieces. And so, you know, those are things that decisions that need to be made about. Um, 
you know, first, what's our, you know, do we have a highest priority that we want to ensure? That's as uh, Ruben started with with East Montpelier. Do we want to guarantee? Maybe we don't want to use the word guarantee, but we want to ensure the best we can for every kid that they're literate and numerate. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be willing to do anything to do that. You know, those are and those are answers that need to come from the board. Yeah. Because because yeah. the community will press you hard, will press you hard when you're in a, like I want everything for. We can't provide everything. We can't provide deep instruction everywhere. We can buy, provide good instruction in an integrated format. But it, in the ver in the U.S. system, with only 180 days of school, for really about four and a half hours at best a day of instruction for kids, that doesn't total up to that many hours or that much percentage of a day for a kid that's awake that they're in instruction. I'm at a little bit of a loss here. You know, we're paying the teachers to be in the schools. And the kids, why don't we just send the kids home for that? If they're, for that, if they're, when they're in school, they should be educated. I don't know why, unless, if we're not, if we're losing an hour and a half a day, things like recess or non-productive time. We're still paying teachers to be there. I mean, I, I have a little problem saying, you know, we have to negotiate more. We want to be okay if we're educating six, you know, six hours a day or five and a half or four hours a day. We send the kids home. If, if, I mean, why are we even, I mean, to me, I'm not saying to do that, but I'm having an issue with everything being negotiated upward when we're already paying for that presence. I mean, I'm paid to be at work. All day long. It's not I am not paying for two hours of recreation time in my job. You know, not, and most people are work that way. So I think you're making a leap there. That's yes, the wrong okay, leap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're making the wrong leap. <laughs> okay, just get clarified again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So there are other teachers, it's actually been proven that teachers with actually higher time on instruction, uh, contact time with kids can be less productive for student learning. Because there's, if you don't have the calibration and the professional development time for teachers to work to improve and to learn and to study, that their time off, the time so that they're in front of the kids, is, yeah. is just as important as the time that they're instructing kids. Because they're doing a lot of the planning and adjustment for kids to make the adjustments that need to happen. The Jap Japan has been, and many other nations, and we could go right to the ones that are in the top, they're always listening to the top of Tim's study or PISA studies that have shown that, that that time not in front of kids is makes, even having less of it, makes the time you do have more productive. I get that, I'm assuming that's true. Because the kids are, I don't know. I, because the kids are off for an hour and a half doesn't mean the teachers are. Off. Right. Yeah, not just that, but we also can't expect kids, I mean, my God, a six hour board meeting, we don't kill ourselves. So we can't expect kids to sit in a seat and like be educated for six hours at a time. So I feel like they also have to have breaks. And we, if we're asking oh. teachers to be there, we can't say, you need to be there between 8 and 4, but you're only going to work from 8 to 11 and 1 to 3, so we're only going to pay you for six hours. Like, we're asking them to be there, so... Yeah. They have I, to I don't argue. They, I'm not just trying to act like a slave driver here. I'm just, I compare it to my own experience you know, growing up. And, you know, mm -hmm. we spent a lot more than four and a half hours in, you know, in classroom a day, I'll guarantee you. Mm -hmm. You know, we had fairly good effect. And I don't think it had any... We had recess time in there. We, <coughs> I don't remember any. I, I just want to make. Issues. I'm sorry, Randall. I just want to make sure that we don't get too far into the weeds on kind of like the recess or the yeah. Yeah. 15 yeah, minutes here or there, because because I think for the for the for the board, it's really a goal a goal setting exercise, mm -hmm. which is I think mm -hmm. what I hear Kari Car saying is that the school quality committee has been looking at the performance data and monitoring data, you know, for the last several months, and basically has already reached the conclusion. Do they want to recommend to the board that we set a goal uh, that would establish a higher benchmark than we're currently achieving for literacy and math in particular? Significant improvement. That's yeah. what we're asking for. And us. so I, I think that the, the board's challenge is, in my opinion, to kind of figure out what, what academic uh, outcome, what educational outcome goal do we want to hold ourselves as boards and the leadership team and the school system accountable to reaching? And then, you know, the folks that we've hired who have expertise in education and are doing the analysis of the schedule and, you know, probably already have some ideas about ways that things could be shifted around to, to achieve yep. that goal. 
can bring some recommendations and some thinking and you know so um, I just want to make sure that you know our I feel like I, I would propose that our job is to set the bar um, in conversation obviously with the administrators but to set the bar for the system um, that's our responsibility that the public has charged us with mm -hmm. um, and then you know then we have the conversation about sort of yeah, and I think what Carrie was saying at the last, I was never talked at the last meeting, but being able to understand what best practice, and Bill was saying that they were already going to bring that, what best practices we're using right now, that we're already part of that uh, retreat that we all took together, because I think most of the principals shared with us, the ones that spoke, you know, the, the schedule. So they are working really hard on all of those, uh, on all of those uh, issues and that scheduling chart yeah. to be able to do to be sure that we don't dismantle what they've been doing to you know like try finding the time for teachers to meet to yeah. do professional development to have interventions to like really so that we have an understanding of yeah. how not not micromanage it but I think the more that we understand so for a lot of people it was really eye-opening this retail board member, so it would help us set that guarantee. I really don't want to use the guarantee because guarantee scares me. We talked about this at the last meeting. I want to see the opportunities for best practice. So I came out of that meeting and I'm like, you know, like the one thing that I can think at East Montpelier, because we've been doing this for three or four years now, is the special educators, right? The, the special educators, we're still not, you know, we're still pulling some kids out of that. So that connection that off. he explained is off. And it's just like, and, and that's, you know, so so we want to work on that. And it's not like the board members, I mean, the, the principals recognize that, and we were like, oh, that that's the one thing that we're not doing. So yeah. the more that, to me, the more that if yeah. they can come and explain to us what, what they're doing, because I know, you know, if the principal has done a lot of work and tried to redo the schedule, and it's really hard when they have to kind of when you have, when you have limited it. When you have limited resources and limited... FT, when you have fractional FTEs, those drive the overall schedule, not the core learning time. When you have small systems the way we do, I mean, I've done schedules many times, and the thing that drives the schedules are singletons and low FTEs. So we don't have 60 minutes of math guaranteed for every kid. We can't guarantee that right now, every day. So to improve math, we're not even doing what's the national best practice for math instruction. And it's because we have to, when someone's there for that day, for their point .2 or point .4 of their job, you have to move the schedule to make sure that special happens. And so my question to the board is, when I ask you about priorities, I want to do everything for kids. I want to have as much as possible for kids. Don't hear me that I don't. But I, when trying to operationalize some things, I have to ask the question, what's the priority? Because if I let the little things that we are fractional because we're so small in our systems drive our schedule, we won't be able to do some of those best practices in core instruction. And we've tried to reschedule multiple different ways. And you know, it's hard on an employee to say, so I'd like you to work half a day on Monday morning and come back on Tuesday afternoon. And for them to get a job somewhere else, that just doesn't work. So it's not fair to that employee. So what do we do? We try to say it's one day or two days or three days. You know. Um, and those are, those are the real, and I know I'm going down a little bit of wormhole, but no, no, it's okay. understanding when I ask for priorities, we can make the operation, we can make the thing work, you know, put things together. But where am I going to, where are we going to give? So I, I want to just suggest to, I want to sort of um, just put out there to this committee kind of my thinking about how this will play out over the next, like, two months. Because we, you know, when we adopted goal two, like part of the timeline that is included with that goal involves, you know, coming to a decision about a, a goal around <coughs> learning by our December meeting or at our December meeting. Um, so, you know, next week uh, we're going to get our student monitoring report. So that's basically a state of the school. It's the leadership team's best thinking about kind of, you know, the data that we have and where we're at and and. Uh, you know, some of the learning that Bill's observations that Bill's talking about. Uh, and I'm sure we will have a discussion mm -hmm. next Wednesday about it. Um, the School Quality Committee, I think, next meets in November. Um, 
I guess that's right. Yeah. 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 Follow up on that report. And so I'm hoping that maybe by the time we get to our second executive committee meeting in November, that we, you know, we might have a goal to recommend or to discuss or think about, yeah. and then bring that to the SU board in December. So there is kind of some thinking around how to, you know, get this to the point where in December we're actually trying to take a decision about um, where we set the bar. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll just preview for we're planning to bring you a math goal because that's what I heard. Uh, in this yeah. next meeting, we've asked all the teachers to set the math goal for their classes. They've given us all that data. We're rolling it up. It's not coming from the leadership team. It's coming from the instructors on math. Yeah, Matthew, I think we, we not knowing, knowing that we don't know much, mm -hmm. said we're not satisfied with these results. We want to see significant improvement. We don't know exactly what that looks like. So that's the, our call. We're asking for a response being, here's what we think is yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. And, you know, being somewhat vague, but, you know, you know, when we say significant, I think we mean significant in both areas. And I think that's where we'll probably get some responses, a response on you. We may have to cut out X, Y, and Z. And yeah, it's not going to be comfortable. To decide, I need to know. Right. What do you want to do? Because I can't, can't keep, keep, we just can't keep, in my estimation as your superintendent, we cannot continue to go the way we've been going. We need to be clear about what the priorities are. And if the priorities are to flex for, and I don't want to pick on any content. <laughs> you know, no, we yeah. 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 had a discussion, but they're hard discussions. But you and I understand yes, what I we're talking about, right? Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's when it comes down to that, when you've got to make a tough decision, it's knowing where the communities want those priorities. Because what it comes down to is providing equity for all. And sometimes that providing equity for all means it's going to be different for different kids. And that difference means there's got to be resources sometimes taken from different places to make that happen. Well, we're going to get a lot deeper into this conversation than I think we can tonight, next week, because that's where the report's coming. And I think that's where we'll have the whole group, so which is really where the conversation On the 24th? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. One, one week from today. Yeah. Uh, are there any other comments about that? Or? Okay. We'll come back to it, I guess, when we build the agenda. But, and it, and it's, it's the bulk of the agenda for the 24th, <laughs> is this topic, I think. So. Um, community engagement. Uh, local board statements addressing the why. I know that we had discussed here uh, wanting our executive committee members uh, to bring back from the local boards uh, summaries or statements of those conversations about what community engagement means to them. Um, but we are missing three of our regular members this evening. Um, we did talk about it. You did, okay. Yeah, yeah, we did. We we went all over the place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we did talk about it, and I think we narrowed it down. I can find the minutes because I would be lying if I told you I remember exactly what we said. But we we spent most of our meeting talking yeah. about this, so so we did came up with a broader goal in two pieces. And I can I was just starting to look it up. Okay. You can move to somebody else. I guess I have to ask the, again, ask the committee members, I don't really have a strong sense of where to go with this conversation. I, I'll admit to some kind of frustration a, a little bit with um, not really knowing how to pull this one together, I guess. Well, um, Floor and I and Scott went to, it's a public access that puts that on mm -hmm. about community engagement. And <clears throat> It really brought home to me, how to me, and our board doesn't get it, see it the same way. But I, to me, community engagement isn't having meetings to inform people. Community engagement means you go to whatever community things are occurring, and you talk to people about what's happening in the town or the school or whatever it is. You go to the dump for an hour on Saturday, like say the dump, you know what I mean, transfer station, and, and talk to people there. And 
There's also ways of doing it where people come together to eat a meal, say in Worcester, and then you can get them, if you go enough, to have these conversations. But I think for us as, as a district to do community engagement, we need more a workshop. We need more information on how to do it. I, I, I think you just can't pull it out of the air. I mean, I, it was, we came late, so we got set where we were supposed to sit with different people, but not as much as we might have. And just that, and with the questions thrown on the table, uh, made me understand more about what community engagement is. So how we get to teach everybody how this works, I don't know. As Bill says, we all don't have any more time. I and mean, we all have the time there is, it's how we decide to use it. And um, if, if we're serious about community, you know, there we go again, what's your priorities? If community engagement is a priority, then we'll take a step in, out of, of, of some time or provide people with the workshops and say, can you go to these? How many people can go to this or that? But that's the only way we're going to really do community engagement well, mm -hmm. or even n nearly well. We just need to learn more, myself too. I also went to that, and I, there, were to the yeah, there were a few take homes. There were a few take homes. Yeah. One was that if you want to do have any sort of community engagement piece, it seems like you really have to have some dedicated members doing that. It was interesting how they brought up when you have to have, when you have to obey open meeting laws, all of this becomes much more difficult. So they actually recommended that the schools, the individual schools create committees, committees not the school boards. But if the school creates a committee um, that the school board can fund, then that committee can work without open meeting laws needing to take place and um, so I thought that was one interesting piece to, to potentially try to get all schools having a committee that has funding that does that. And um, the other thing that I thought was for me was a, a big take home was uh, tremendous efficiency in community engagement. So whenever there's events, so I'm like thinking right now like oh there's the harvest dinner, I had all these good intentions. So really at the harvest dinner at Rumney, I should go with a big sign that says, you want to talk about school board issues? Come sit with me, as if I know something about school board issues. But bring my your, point bring is... Bring your pitchforks here. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but bring your tiki torches. And, um, and so to try to be as efficient as possible and piggyback on every, like, every community event should have, like, if you have a conservation club, they should go. The school board should go. The selectmen should go. To try to make it so that when people go to any one event, they also get exposure to these other things. And so those were big for me, and I thought, you know, talking about funding this in a non-open meeting law kind of way seemed like it would make it more efficient. I don't know if that's... No, that's, I mean, that's what I found in my doctoral work, is that you stay away from open meeting law. <laughs> it's true in Canada and Australia as well, but they have more lax in their open meeting law. Mm. But it's that idea is you go to where the people are, and that you go to where the people are going to something that isn't your event. Yeah, to the and yeah, you, and you, and, and then you, you piggyback on it, and that's really powerful um, and a lot of it is simple ways a lot of it's really you don't try to get into thick engagement which we talk a lot here about what's called thick engagement about sitting down and having focus tables and all that you don't do that for a while you do a lot of easy thin engagement to then focus when you're going to get focus groups <clears throat> together to then go deep but you have to understand that through so well, what, what's the why? why? Why bother with all this activity that you guys have been describing? You know, oh, well, the, we, the, I, I, had, I don't know, I have done two four of them. I love Nicole Cabral is one of the women that does these yeah. meetings, and I always find that I learned a lot about, I love community engagement. So, you uh -huh. know, I've learning to talk to other people and, and just the, the different parts of it. But I think that when we decided on our board, because I was on the same mind frame that you are, like either have another retreat or we need that, especially is that there's too many priorities right now. So we made a decision that that's not where we were going to go. The, trying to set the, you know, the midst of Fact 46, trying to s figure out if somebody had the energy to do, because it has to come from the public, right? Or it has to come from a member of the community or the PTNO or somewhere like that. We didn't have that 
right now, but we did want to continue to do some community engagement that we still, for best, as much as we try, we don't do a good job, right? So we said that we would figure out how we were posting on Front Porch Forum, you know, like do the things that were, do them better. Like I just looking, we were supposed to post our minutes and we're still, you know, I still can't find it depending on the, on the website. Yeah. So do the simple things. So we set two two goals. One was to communicate more efficiently, efficiently what is going on uh, at at school. That we do sometimes take advantage of front porch board, but not always. And we, as a board, just through the through the budgeting season, is when we attend the community events to be there and use that to tell people what. What we're doing, we did a lot of that last year, and that was that was great. But then, to so the rest of the year, we attend the the stuff, but we don't always use it at a certain opportunity. We just had a huge harvest dinner, and we didn't really yeah, yeah. take that opportunity. So, try to do more of the community engagement to advance where we want to go. So, inform the community about our priorities, because I think, especially right now with the quality. The media where we're going. One thing is us going, going there. The community at large doesn't understand. So we talk about about a lot about that. Just creating that trust with the community of where we want to go and understanding that they support this. For for example, one of the things that we talk about is like, well, music might look different there. You know, that's where a lot of the extra time is. And I'm, I am personally terrified of that. But also, how do you explain that to the community? How do you? to find more time in the day, right? Well, the boards could also charge the administrators with, yeah. with doing that communication, like, or something, you know, or we could be a component of, um, because really, like, explaining why it makes sense educationally is the job of the educators, again, you know, they're going to do a better job of it than the board members might, although we can support them, you know, because we're in the communities and not exactly. I mean, the administrator's job is to inform what's happening in the administration, and the school board's job would be to, bigger picture, try to decide on what the goals are for learning. And so uh, we have an obligation to our electorate to try to represent them. They are paying for the school, and the school board is tasked with being the, li per the VSBA, tasked with being the liaison between the electorate and the school. And so in designing those big um, the big view of whether we want to think about, you know, what our goals are, or whatever we're going to do, or how we're going to spend our money, or whether we're going to get a new playground, like, those are definitely school board jobs, and since the electorate is paying for them, definitely, I feel like we have a responsibility to try to make sure that the electorate knows what's happening and how to be able to get their voice heard. Does it do look like I'm not making any sense? No, I, 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 I agree, I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm just saying there's different ways of doing that. See, I would feel that the administrator, that's like not their job. Like the principal is supposed to tell us about what's happening in the school and we're supposed to decide or help decide like the financial and goal direction, right? So those are... Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's that, you, I think you were right, but it's also a team effort. Like the, the principal puts out a newsletter and says, you know, what's going on in the school. And like we had some of our, uh, like Kathy Christie, when we were trying to do more of the coaching, we had them come and present at a board meeting so that other people understood what they were, were doing. So I think, we, you know, like it's good to piggyback with each other. Mm. Yeah, I think we, we have about maybe five more minutes oh. for this because I really want to end at seven. But um, yeah. I guess, you know, just, yeah, I don't know what the right answer is, but my hesitation about sort of the board really taking a kind of um, lead role on that is that is some of the things that we've been discussing about you know when we meet there's public meet open meeting law there's camp there's video cameras there's agendas there's specific times for public comment but it's not necessarily like a dialogue between so it's kind of an it's an awkward and intimidating atmosphere for for trying to do communication um, so we can try to do it informally you know we can visit these events and we can try to build relationships and be talking to people but but we're not really sort of getting the word out, you know, uh, sort of um, as widely as and clearly as possible, maybe. Um, and then the other thing is, I, I really would think I mean, it is incumbent on us, I think, to understand um, the 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 rationale for the educational strategy that's being employed, you know, in the system, and to be able to speak to that, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. 
Um, but I just think that the the school system, in a sense, is is almost in a better position to do that, and and maybe would benefit more from uh, if we sort of set a goal around community engagement or, or or had some discussion about what does it mean to really be engaging the community effectively. What role can the community play in the school? How do we sort of go about building that social capital? Um, so again, I don't have answers. I'm just trying to kind of respond to what what you were saying, but. The other thing that I think, and this is a, again a question for the group, but is I sort of feel like if we, if this committee almost doesn't put some ideas or some recommendations in front of the SU board at a carousel meeting so that all the boards can hear it at once and can maybe discuss it on the same night, that we're not going to move on this goal because right now it's just, <clears throat> it's, all, it's in all these different places. Um, I think of one thing, I mean, I don't know, in my experience in working in community, I work a lot with communities, but you know, the, the participation has to be meaningful. And like at this board, we're participating. Bill, you know, Lori, they're our professional staff, they're far more engaged in the operation of the school. But we, if we, as long as we have a purpose to be here, we'll be here, okay? And the public work the same way. And so, I mean, that's, you know, I think it's our, if we want to effectively bring them in, we have to have a something that is actually mean it has to be worth their time to come in terms of some kind of meaningful outcome. I'm not talking about cookouts or things like that. I'm talking about, you know, how, how are they helping to facilitate the school? They won't show up. They're, as we've all said here, we're all busy. They're all busy. You know, we're busy lives. If it's just, you know, it's not, they won't come to just spend time. There has to be a purpose, you know, a, a value in their presence. So if we want to do that, that's well, we have to figure that piece out to make it worth their while. Um, <clears throat> two thoughts um, about where do we go next is really the question with this. And one is, I'm I am intrigued by this question of why. I mean, that was our first charge, and it seems like we've not been able to answer that ourselves. The U thirty two board took two stabs at it, and we just have a laundry list. We don't have a single why. But I would, I would suggest this. We would only do it if it were to help us um, accomplish these student learning outcomes, right? So is it true that good community engagement supports success? So there's no research on that that proves that that's true. The only research that's close is parent engagement, and it's really on a one-to-one. -one. It hasn't been done on a broad scale for like school systems or school districts. We know that the research is very clear that an engaged parent, no matter what demographic the student comes from, and racial, economic, uh, urban, rural, will improve the education for that individual student. Okay, so That's there's, there's one research. answer. That's what we know from research. Do we want to spend time unpacking that and, and figuring out a strategy from based on that, or what the research says? Or, I, building on Floor's comment, maybe we don't have the bandwidth this year to really delve into community engagement or parent engagement. Maybe what we really should be focusing on is communication. And, and just, I don't know where this takes us, but just saying, hey, we want to do the best job we can, just getting the word out about what we're up to, what's going on in the schools, you know, our part of communicating to the community about what's happening in the system. And that would be another aspect of this that's probably more manageable. There's something to think about this too. We've got a lot of change in the way. And you know, we're talking engagement tends to also equate with enfranchisement in this in and if people are disengaged, they're a lot more likely to become behave like a mob. If they're not connected, they things can go awry. And this is a you know, I wish that happened in many places in many situations. And you know, that's one of the reasons you actually want some level of engagement. We I, I mean which we have challenges with our education right now. Funding everything else, scale, you know, and that takes real public support. And so if they're not engaged, that public support gets diminished very quickly. And they can really not just be diminished, but it can be get really nasty. It can be used against the system you know, if, if in time, if it can get scapegoated and everything else. You know, so it's just something for us to pay attention to. 
but it's important. It can really backfire if you don't have it. So we're going to have to come back to this this topic. I, I guess the only other question I would leave people with is, you know, public assets. Nicole Cabral. You know, when we when we were planning the retreat, we had two we had two directions we could go. One was with focusing on educational outcomes and best practices with NAE. The other was community engagement with Nicole. So we have that connection. We know how much it costs. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, do we want to do that sometime? When? Is it, yeah. is it even a priority right now? It's just a question that like we can grapple with at some point, too. Um, if everyone's OK, let's, let's build the agenda yeah. for next week. And then, I, I would just say, like, if you want to take a look to the schools, can I do it along with Jim Over he, came, he was a speaker at, I don't know, seven years ago or something like that at BSBA. And he had, his piece is more in information, but really labeling why Communities can do it along and creating that trust on the team or et cetera. So, you know, they pretty much can't get from A to B to from, you know, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to move now education to the next level. We need that support from the community, and because we're at the same time dealing with that for six, we, you know, as we have been able to see, public sentiment is everything. Right. Yeah. And we're trying to move something. So I just wanted to throw that there just because it's I, you know, I because that's what we've been scrambling with, not for lack of trying. Yeah, I mean just so you know, like I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I do. I just feel like we're in a kind of wilderness of direction right now. And I can, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. hesitant to kinda of like, you know, bring it to the larger as you board or you know, without yeah. without a sort of clear sense of like, you know, at this, at this point. So that's that's yeah. where I'm at. You're right. I mean you agree. Yeah. Yeah. So for the October SU board meeting, again, you know, kind of the 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 larger part of it is the student monitoring report and discussion thereof. Um, so I, I want to build the agenda around that. We have 90 minutes at the next meeting. I, I'd love to, I, I don't know how much time you think you need, Bill, for the presentation. Jen asked me that yesterday as we were working on it. We think probably 40 to 45 minutes with some activity built in. I'm going to use the same questions that you had last year, Kari. I don't okay. to talk to you, but I think those same questions are important ones for folks to work cross-board on. Yeah. Unless you, if you think of something groups. in small groups, just yeah. like we did last year. But I think... Will, will those questions be in the packet somehow that people can think about them a little bit? Uh, we can make sure of that. Yeah. yeah. I think that'd yeah, be that'd good. Because I have them at the end of that PowerPoint from what you gave last year. Um, the, yeah. And so we're going to do the same. Uh, we'll have detailed data and every individual school's PowerPoint up there by Monday of this week. Um, hopefully Friday if everything works. But I, I don't want to promise that with the technology. Of getting everything up and recorded, um, and then so folks can look at that. Uh, where will it be put? I'm sorry, where is the data going to be? It'll be on this, just like it was last year. It was on my blog, which I send a link out in the in the packet of where it is. Okay. But the report itself. The report itself. That's what I'm saying. The report. The the written report will be in the packet, um, just like I did last which year. Which we'll get Friday. Maybe. Yeah, you'll get it on Friday, hopefully. Uh, with you know some data behind it, but not all the individual data. Right. right. Um, cool. And you know we're not all we have to protect some of the you know we can't get down to. Here's the thing, and um, we need to all remember, and I should probably put this in the memo too, is the limits we have on reporting numbers, because if you remember last year, I think I told everyone right. we we are allowed to protect to to ensure student privacy. We can't report below certain numbers since different different aggregations, so we have to aggregate two or three years sometimes. If you wanted to say, and what's the difference between our students that are special ed, that have an IEP, and those who don't, we have to aggregate two or three years to be able to look at that at one grade level. Mm -hmm. Their numbers are so small, and you have to protect. You can't release data of less than 40 in some subgroups and less than 11 in others. So we have to be able to ensure the privacy by. Uh, the way Vermont interprets interprets the FERPA law. That's one of the problems in small systems. We can't look publicly down at really detail um, data. Good. So I'm guessing we probably want to try to schedule an hour for that report and discussion at minimum. Yeah. Like it possibly. You know, 
maybe more, and more if we can squeeze it out of the... Will it be able to pour it out from the small groups, you figure? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't even able to do that last time, so we could. that would be great to have that. If we can. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking to you, Kirk, so I'd be glad to... That's, that's usually a good idea. Yeah. I mean, in terms of other things that we have to put in the agenda, we can try to deal with these first. Yeah. We have just a quick budget update, so, you know, the dates that we just discussed in the process, right? Uh, we have the Act 46 updates that we basically did tonight. We have to do with the SU board. Dorothy, you had a suggestion for Act 46 also. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> 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 nice guy. Um, happened to me today, too. No. I don't know. I was in a meeting and someone said, Phil, I'm like, yeah, we need lunch right I don't know if we have anything else that, I, and I don't have it in front of me, the, you know, an agenda in front of me, but. Oh, well, let me go get it. Cool. I don't know if we have anything else that has to be on there or not. I can't remember. Okay. Goal two, the, the recommendation. Well, yeah, yeah. They, they sort of they, they, go, they, they go hand in hand. I think. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of a. Yep. So, what are you hoping to get out of that meeting then? So, what's the? Is it just a dissemination of information as to how the students are doing, or? Well, I think my understanding is that Bill and the leadership team are working not just on a presentation of kind of status, but also on their interpretation of it. Um, so. What is this telling them? You know, where we where do we need to do better? That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I hope that that leads naturally into a conversation with the boards about all right, you know, again, where do we want to set that bar conversation? Right, like this is where we're at now. This is where we really ought to be, or where we want to be. Like, you know. So we're moving towards trying to get a more specific learning goal from each board. Is that for all the boards? I mean, ideally, we'd adopt them in common because if we don't then you know kind of all this all the scheduling stuff we talked about at the retreat that has to involve the whole system mm -hmm. and as Bill's saying when we have fractions of, of employees that's kind of yep. jiggering with the system a little bit um, so I mean the ideal outcome is that everybody kind of adopts the same goal yeah so I'll tell you just to give you a little more tell me cut me off here Matthew if I go too much into detail I've already done it a couple times for you um, the Literally, what happened this month, and it's such a celebration for me because it's the first time, and according to Kat and her 14 years of being, this is the mm -hmm. first time she can remember. We have all math teachers have set a goal for their students for what they're learning. What? All oh, teachers math. of math okay. have set a target Great. for where their kids should, for the number of kids that should be proficient at the end of the year. That's never happened in Washington Central before. In most school systems, this has been going on for 15 or years or more where teachers set goals and where their kids, not in a supervisory evaluation method, but to say, this is where I plan to have my kids, and what did I do that helped to make that happen? And what were things that went awry for Bill or for Dorothy or for Floor? And what can I do different next time when I have someone that has a similar learning profile to learn from that? Mm -hmm. And it's definitely not a, it's not a supervision evaluation method. It's in the, how do I use data to improve my practice? That's a very new thing, and that's that's where I come from as a curriculum director. We were doing that for years, and it's taken a lot of cultural work to move us there. And we had, and I can tell you, we're pushing a lot of people because we're hearing the noise back in the system right now for doing well, that. Well, once they've had a couple of successful years at it, mm -hmm. exactly. Then exactly that the is. laggards will catch on right. and come along. Exactly, exactly. But I wanted to say, to me, I said this today, yesterday in this room. I'm sitting right about here. I'm going to sit with was, but I said the same thing to the leadership team. I said, I know we've been hearing a lot of flack, but hey, this is really good. It's really, really good what we're doing. So thank you, boards. Thanks to all the boards to help spur us to do that. It should be just a mandatory. That's kind of a, kind of just like a, you use your KPIs in your, I mean, that's your performance measure. I mean, that, exactly I'm just telling you where we've been in Washington Central. That's I don't think people uh, have understood that that's, yeah. The difference of where our system ha is been huh. compared to where other systems are yeah. and have been. That's good. So, anyway. um, are you done? I just want to hear. I think. Oh, yeah. No. We kind of have like a straw agenda for the SU board to work off of, but I can't remember what's on it. If there's anything else other than what we've discussed, like carry over from the last meeting, or you know, I just don't. Does the leadership does the leadership team's presentation include what proficiency means? Like, 
if the goal is that all of our math teachers are saying, I want 95% of my students and I want 80 percent like what does proficiency mean? Is that a national standard? I don't know. No, we're measuring, uh, we're using STAR 3, Matt, STAR 360 assessment, which okay. is a national assessment we use, that's a nationally normed assessment that shows tight correlation to the Smarter Balance Assessment, which is our state assessment, mm -hmm. that there's good alignment there. So knowing that we have good alignment there, our report cards are where the next place we have to calibrate. There's not good alignment between our report cards and our local assessment and the state assessments. Is that in your report for next week? It's going to be there, yeah. Perfect. Good. And that's the next thing. Last year we showed that our local assessments were not in good alignment with the Smarter Balance. So we shifted those targets. We were using the same measure, but it's like what target you use to measure proficiency, just as you said. Okay. So the only other things that are on here that, I, that we haven't mentioned already are that we're supposed to approve a policy committee charge, a charge for the policy committee. Uh, and then we have like a second reading of the policies, but that's mm -hmm. usually a matter of you know, a few minutes. Uh, so, but what, I, what I have to offer um, is, <clears throat> Um, last week, when we last meeting, when we were talking about um, boards that wanted to join the lawsuit um, against forced mergers, and um, David Kelly, who's a lawyer out of Greensboro and has done a lot of work with um, the group of people who are uh, fighting the forced mergers has offered to come to school board meetings and explain what the lawsuit is about, what it will cover, and so forth. Now, I know that last week you had the straw vote. There were some people who said, oh, I really don't know what I'm voting on. You know, they didn't, so they didn't know how they wanted to vote, and, and that's understandable. I mean, my head's so full of it, it's hard to, to, to get my head around people who don't. Um, but anyway, he's offered to come, and I did quickly email him before tonight and told him the, the times, and um, I didn't say the amount of time. I just thought if it's something you thought would help um, people make any some decisions, um, that would be fine. Or the other thing would be to get him to come to individual board meetings, but since we're all meeting the same time, that's kind of hard. So I'm just throwing it out there for He's willing to come and explain what it's all about, and, and, and then leave it at that, uh, or answer some questions. But I think just an explanation and uh, some time for some questions would be would be fine. Would be help might be helpful. Mm -hmm. I, my only comment is about the ne this coming meeting would be the time. Because I think that it has to be this common meeting or not, or because everything will just start rolling into what's happening. But so the lawsuits are not filed yet. Oh so. no, they're still working on them and okay. refining <coughs> them, and 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 there's many different issues that may or may not be included. I mean, there are some that for sure, like the taking of the buildings and the debt, mm -hmm. are the two things that they're going to address. But there are many others, and so. All of that will be actually refined after the full decision of the state board comes out. You know, the actual, we get the letter mm -hmm. right, right. saying that we've been merged, which we will be getting a letter saying we'll be merged. So, um, so that's, so that's going to happen, but for people are, they're still asking if people want to join. Um, a board could join, wait until they actually get the letter and still join the lawsuit. So you could, I suppose, do it at a later time. Um, but I just thought that it's in the air now and people were kind of asking about it last time and David's willing to come. We might be able to give him 15 minutes or so. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to, to laugh. I just, but the idea that that would only take 15 minutes to me just seems... That's really because we spent so much time talking about it at the last meeting, you know, which we needed to do. Um, but I, I I'm so hopeful that at this next meeting we can really focus on the educational outcomes piece. Um, but that's just my opinion. There's so. some wisdom in what she's saying because the educational outcomes might change dramatically if we're merged. It's a very different question than if we're not. 
I mean, because not all of us, well, because uh, we would want, I completely agree that all boards should be in alignment, but getting that to happen is a very different thing than having one board vote on educational outcomes for the entire district. So, can I speak to that though? Yeah. Because my, the, the reason I have felt really like uh, positive about this conversation we've been having about the educational goal is that it, it, it doesn't matter in a way what our governance is going forward. Like we, we have an opportunity right now as the board we are to kind of lay down the gauntlet, educationally speaking. Um, whether we stay the same or whether we're forced into a, a merger, we can draw a line in the sand that to say this is our take on what should be happening at these schools with regards to educational outcomes, no matter what happens with, with governance. Yeah, I'm actually confused by that, Allison, because this, these boards spent two years coming to the same educational outcomes. Mm -hmm. So I'd be really confused that if those, which are usually up on the wall, that's why we're all pointing to the wall, they're down because they won't stay up there right now. Um, but all those student learning outcomes and the standards that, if that's going to shift, I really need to know because I've been telling all the educators in the system, we're graduating kids based on that in two years, and it has to be aligned pre-K through graduation in all our schools. So to me, those are the outcomes. So if those aren't the outcomes, I have to change my student monitoring report because that's what I'm basing the student monitoring report off of. And we spent, as separate boards individually, we started as a grassroots effort to bring all those up and then say, okay, what's similar? What needs to be tweaked? And all that, what I think is actually one of the most powerful moments in my six years for in Washington Central is that all the boards say, hey, we do want the same, and here it is. You know, I would, you know, I, I, I will say this, and I, that's really important. But you know, what's happening in this in this debate going on right now is the most important thing in front of these. Where I don't care what anybody says. I mean, to the community right now, th this is a dramatic change in our educational system. There were questions at that meeting, as Don said. You know, people didn't really have a good understanding. This is a way to get a very brief. You know, not a big argument. It doesn't have to be that, but it, a very concise argument about what this is about, about the class action suit. And I mean, I can't imagine anything we do being more important at this moment than dealing with that. And I'm not, I'm not putting, I'm not in any way minimizing the importance of what you're talking about there. But this really can't be delayed. I mean, we've been funneled and funneled and funneled and funneled, and funneled for, for three years now. And you know, every minute we put something off is we basically Can I say something? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go Kari and then Laura, yeah. Uh, two, 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 two things. That, well, it looks like we're going to go over time. Yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> sorry. This is late plans. Just, just noting it for you, for you all. So. Um, I, I disagree that this is that, that, that our governance structure is the most important thing to our students. It's just not. And uh, secondly, uh, my understanding is that actually the individual boards are fairly clear on where they stand. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Callis and Berlin were oh, unanimous in their support. You're, you're, you're right. I wasn't, I wasn't suggesting he come in order to convince people to join it, just to answer questions. And maybe, maybe he, the individual boards, one or two, one or two individual boards would be interested in having him at the individual board meetings after the fact, at two separate times, um, would be that, better that makes than, more sense than doing me. the whole thing. If that makes more sense, then I'll just email to the various board chairmen that we have um, his, his uh, he can come, an and they can decide what they want to do with it. Yeah, there were certainly a lot of questions in that room. About the yeah. lawsuit, yeah. Yeah, and they were in there, and Floor was next. So, <laughs> so I, I think what Alison, if I understand it right, I think what you were trying to say is that that decision might be easier if there was just one board. Is that what you were trying to do? Yes. Okay. So I think that's what you you were trying to say. But I I agree with everybody. I I get a little panic when people. I feel like we have wasted so much time in Hack Forty Six, regardless of where we are. If we're five boards or one boards, we all want the same thing for kids and in my mind this is not coming soon enough you know like this needs to happen yesterday and yesterday and 
and yesterday, so there's no more important work. You know, like the, the kids don't have a year to waste, basically. You know, they never have a year to waste. So this is the work that we should be doing. If we have time left at, at the very end, and, and David wants to sit there and, and make an explanation, that's... Uh, I think that's, that will, that's, that, uh, that's 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 great. I'm not saying that that is not important. It but might that be will, an actual better idea to just send yeah. the, to each of the chairs and say, yeah. "David's available. What time would you want him?" And this yes. is how you communicate with him and let it go at that. Right. Because some boards have made a different. They don't mm -hmm. want somebody else coming in, or they may. They may. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the ones I think of who may are Middlesex and Worcester, who were sort of. And Middlesex was kind of, oh, we'll wait to see what happens before we decide. But okay. in the meantime, you might want to know more. Yeah. And we just yeah. Want to know. So and I, I would just note that the, that the local boards will have separate meetings in November also. So that may also be an opportunity yeah. for, for David. But, but I was just going to write an email to the chair and say, David's available. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Well, it's good for him to be able, I mean, if, I mean, if you're going to do this in one shot. I know, but you know, sometimes you can't. Mm -hmm. Yes. We I was at Berlin, and since no one's here, um, one of the unanswered questions was who is really suing and who is paying for the suit, and I don't think that answer has come to light. That land. answer is now mm -hmm. out. There is a fund, um, a defense fund, where they're raising the money okay. they, uh, with a GoFundMe site plus sending checks mm -hmm. to. Because Berlin was members. unclear too. They yeah, they, they sure. wouldn't have known that. Right, but the, they did not know. <laughs> they kind of kind of knew, so but it's, now it's it, it's out there. Okay, so it's not a school it's, it's, budget. There are no there's just, no mon money okay. coming from any school budgets. Thank you. If could I we get a copy of that? Is that something we should have in the file? There well the fi the no? lawsuit no. will not be filed until we have something in writing from the state that we're forced to merge. Right. No, no, I was just asking if the financing part of that was something that was a public document that, that this Well, I put it on I on on it, uh, FPF Front Porch Forum tonight. Okay. So and I can just send you a copy. You can just print copy. it. Yeah. yeah. I just thought it I just, just send it to Lori yeah. because Dorothy in, in case somebody asks us that we would have it in writing what, yep. what did you say that you just sent a copy for? I just sent it to what do you want to do? I yes. guess you have to send it to me so we do have a few other actions we need to take. Is there, is there anything else that um, we need to put on the SU board agenda for next week? So we have, just to review, we have budget updates, we have Act 46 updates, we have the bulk of the time given over to the student monitoring report and a discussion of goal number two, we'll call it, I guess, learning outcomes. And then we have <coughs> policy readings and policy committee charge. That's essentially the, the 90 minute agenda. Okay, uh, action items. Um, you need to approve the board orders? Yeah, I know. Oh, Should we come back to this? I don't know if someone's ready to make the motion. No, do you want to do, do it? Do you want to do it out on the number? Yes, right I'm sorry, am I going to have it? Oh, the number. Yeah, the yeah. number. I just need the number. It's, um, it's on the front page there. 288,287 with 47 cents. That's so second that. The floor is moving, the <coughs> just to clarify. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the last one moving because I'm an alternate, but yeah. yes, All right, I'm so moving. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the board orders, please say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Uh, 3.2, approved section 125 flexible benefits budget. Um, actually, um, this year we only need one motion. And did you receive the email that Crystal sent out Monday? If not, um, mm -hmm. we brought extra copies. How fast can I add some crust to the table? Does that have the verbiage on it? I don't know. 
So it would be one motion this year because the section 1.5 and the HRA budgets are combined no. with the same vendor. Um, I'll give you a minute to just quickly peruse the notes. I think she's yeah. You got it? I, I have the attachment that she's on here. Okay. okay. So we're budgeting for level pricing, not to increase the pricing. Um, this is the amount of money we charge our member districts. So we pull those resources together in one budget. And so we're um, keeping the rate at $70 per participant. There's about 331 participants. Um, this is combined with a health care reimbursement account. So if you look at the actual 2018, you'll note that that only reflected our health care reimbursement um, claims at a half a year uh, because it started in January. So that was January to June, if you look at 2018. And the line that I'm looking down at is if you go all the way down and you see the claims on the health care reimbursement of 334, 473. So that's for a half a year. Um, and some of those claims were delayed until this year. Um, so that's why we're projecting an increase in the claims. That's the new fund. And so last year when we had this budget, and obviously most of you weren't here, I think only Curry and Matthew mm -hmm. were here last year at this time. You might have, you yeah. know, when we did the budget in you know, yeah. one of your first meetings. So what we had was a separate budget for the HRA, which is the health reimbursement account, which is for the employees, health insurance, and it's our share. Um, Washington Central is liable for the first $4,500 of a family plan and $2,250 for a single plan. And the employees pay the first 10%. So they pay $250 and $500. Mm -hmm. So that's what that new fund does. It actually is a health insurance fund. The other fund has been going on here since, um, as I wrote here, 1995, I think, for the, the Section 125 plan. So I make a motion to approve the health reimbursement account and the Section 125 flex spending account budgets for 2019-2020 as proposed. Second. Any further discussion? No. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you, Lori. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, are there any uh, questions or comments on the reports to the board? Superintendent Financial. I'd like to I can give sure. a yeah, report, please. so I'd like to give a couple of verbal things. Um, thanks, Mickey. Uh, and Allison, first, I want to say I came out a little strong there. I'm sorry about the outcomes. It's just one of those things that's been a lot of work. And no, all right. Right. I heard to hear that we might want to do something different. Um, the uh, two things I wanted to talk to you about. With, as we've talked about several times tonight, there's, uh, I like the analogy of we're in the wilderness a little bit with that 46. One of the things I think that shouldn't happen with budgeting is for it to seem like there isn't chances for input or chances that it isn't transparent on how we're building budgets. And so thinking if we were to be merged, there would be a definite period between December and somewhere in January where there wouldn't be a board in charge of the FY20 budget development until the transition board is seated. I don't think it, I think it is unwise not, I, well, let me say it possibly. I think it is wise for us to engage in public engagement and discussion about the budget during that time. And if it's, I don't know where the authority will lie, I'm not really worried about where the authority lies. The local boards are in charge of the operation of schools through the, the end of January, uh, June 30th, 2019. 
So at those meetings, we're going to be bringing budget information and asking for feedback and collecting all that and giving it to a transition board if the merger were to occur. If it's not, then we're still in the local place. Um, really all it is is the last step, which is recommending uh, a budget. So we're going to keep working on that and keep bringing that through. Um, I'd love any feedback on that. I've talked to almost all the board chairs about that and said they're in agreement of like, let's get this thing as open for feedback as possible in developing these budgets. Um, so we're in that place. We've held off on Washington Central because of the way the new assessment, we really had to wait for special education. So that's the only thing that I, you know, one of the things that I'll need some help and direction from this board and maybe it's the December meeting, we still have a budget meeting, but we don't have a vote. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, I'm looking for s suggestions and help from you. <clears throat> so, you know, it's, it's really how do we get to that place where people are giving that input mm -hmm. and that feedback is being collected and it's like, hey, we're willing to show you whatever we have in community, we want you giving us feedback and all that. So I, I want you to understand that's the tack that I'm trying to come at this from is being more open than before. Because the worst thing to do would be not to do, to have it, even if it wasn't, but to seem that way mm -hmm. is the worst thing to do. So I, it, to keep, I mean, I've said, um, you know, one of the things I want to try to do with, through this work is the keeping of Washington Central together. And one of the best ways to do that is to have things as open as possible. And so if you say, hey, Bill, you got an idea, here's another way to open it up, I'm all ears. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know that it, that recommendation power, I don't know where that's going to be. And that's okay for me to leave in that ambiguity right now. And Lori and I have talked about this, of how do we get, um, that, collect that feedback and keep working on the budget system. You know, you give us, you gave us this board along with all the individual boards that, hey, build the budget the way you've been doing it. Don't try to look for savings and combining, just build them as individual entities. Whether they're an individual entity or not, roll it all together at the end if you have to. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, I think it makes all the sense to kind of follow our traditional processes and yeah. then if they end up being advisory, right. then yeah. so be it. So be it. So be it. But yeah. keep doing it. So we're going to try to schedule that. Um, I don't know. Um, I would like to just do it and have an, um, you know, a local board meetings and just do it and not have to worry about who has to call and all that. I'm not too worried about that either, but I just want to say that. Um, so that's one piece. The second thing is we talked about last meeting, um, you had given support for us to hire another financial person. We finished that today um, and Lori can talk more. Uh, we just, I just literally offered the job right before this meeting at 515 <laughs> to Penny Sandville who's been worked for the state of Vermont as an accountant, accountant in the Agency of Transportation. Uh, no, and DMV. DMV. Oh, it's DMV. Yes. Okay, I thought AOT. Yeah. DMV. Well, she was mm -hmm. kind enough not to correct not me. To correct you. Okay. She should have. Because right. um, I kept saying D mm -hmm. AOT instead of DMV. Um, and she comes to us with 21 years of experience, not only there, but in other places. So mm -hmm. I don't know, Laura, if you want to say mm -hmm. some more about some of the work she'll be doing. Um, yes. Um, so we're really looking forward to improving our financials to get ready for a software conversion. Mm -hmm. So some of that is going through vendors and, and payroll and our HR systems and streamlining our data so that it's ready to import. The worst thing you could ever do is have somebody importing all this archive data that you didn't really need. So we're gonna be working on that goal um, as soon as possible. The other part is this HRA project. As you can see, the good news is our employees are really heavily participating. Um, as I wrote, we've gone up $200,000 in processing, so that takes more staff time. Like I said to Bill, when you add a million dollar budget, <laughs> you need to have resources to fund it. And so we're working on you know, collecting in, and getting more um, out in, into the schools to communicate with our staff about health insurance. There's a lot of questions and things going on right now that we need support here. So that's where we've been spending our time is training employees how to use the new um, online system with DataPath, helping them understand their health insurance bills. It's just been an outreach that is um, necessary, especially for the next couple years. But the software conversion and then also the chart of accounts conversion to meet the state requirements are right up there. So appreciate your support. And um, so, is the, I have a, so is this separate from the future plan 
helping take care of the future planning oh. fiasco? Oh. Data Path is future planning. Okay, okay. now. So and this so will help with all that. They created a million uh, okay. transactions back to January 1 to try to correct the system, mm -hmm. but it's, it's caused employees to have more questions. No. And so Data Path is, is our current vendor, and um, they do the actual payment processing and work with a health insurance company. But what we're trying to do is to reach out and give support to our employees, making sure that they feel comfortable and that they understand how to do their own health insurance tracking and management, which is a new task because we're self-funded. Yeah. Um, is that confusing, or did I go too far? No. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I just had a question on the financial report mm -hmm. you're for transitioning. Oh, okay. Maybe um, where this this um, function that you're just describing, where does it show up in the, which line is it in the? Um, it would be in the HRA budget that you approved for the bulk of it. It's not in our regular budget. Oh, it's not, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And then some of it would be in the software budget that you've approved um, over on page 11. There's $200,000 okay. there okay. to help with the conversion. Um, and if right. we do need to outlay money for programmers and, and the new software. Uh, that's that when, when I last we last time I told you there wasn't going to be expense to the budget, and that's because when we built, you know, we came with you with a three hundred thousand dollar estimate for a new software. Over half of that was employee trend, employee costs mm -hmm. to do the because when I've seen other issues and be part of one that transferred to financial systems, the bulk of the cost was not the software. It was the extra help that had to be brought to make sure you got the data conversion right. Okay. And so that's what half of this position is for this year. I'll probably become full time that next year. So we would include it in the budget um, as a revenue and an expense coming from other funding sources. Okay. Once we can roll up the total cost. So it's cost neutral to the general fund. We're excited. Congrats on the hire. Yeah, oh, that's thank great. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions on those? Oops. I'll confess to being slightly curious about whether negotiations and meetings are happening. I mean, so we had negotiations was... training on Monday night. Mm -hmm. We had uh, all but one or two teachers there from the teacher side. We had all but one board member there. And on the ESP, we had only one, two people show up, three people show up from the ESP. So I'm a little concerned about that. Uh, mm -hmm. But we had IVB folks up. Uh, it was really quick because so many people have been through it. And for a couple of new people, I, I actually felt for them because you know, we're jumping through it like boom, 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 here we go. And if you're brand new to it, like wait a minute, what's this process? So, but they were good and trusting, they were trusting in it of like, yeah, I'll catch up. I've got, you know, if I'm a board member, I've got other board members been through it. If I've been an association member, I've got other association members. Mm -hmm. um, so they're looking to, uh, probably start negotiating the end of November, and there'll be a meeting on the MOU for the healthcare for the data path future planning work uh, on the 1st of November to talk about if that's going to continue past December 1. So, uh, okay. There are dates set out and ground rules will try to be agreed upon in that first meeting. Mm -hmm. And they've asked about the 46, and I said, folks, I think I can speak for the board. Whoever is the one in control about what the who will authorize a contract for FY20, I think they'll be glad to say the folks that are here supporting the board, whether they're a board member or not, can negotiate. We use the example of Larry Sharp when Rummy chained over that, and I think yeah. you were there for this, house, and that Lowry stayed on for to be the negotiator for the board, but um, he wasn't a board member anymore. Did the same with Sila. Was that Woden? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sila did the same. Same, yeah. So, and most of the board members agreed, like, yeah, we think, you know, that's, even if we're, <coughs> if we are, if we aren't represented for the FY20 board, and as Susanna joked, who else wants to come to negotiations <laughs> and be here? <laughs> we like this stuff. And you're lucky you've got two great leaders, and Chani and Susanna. Johnny and Susanna, they're, they're, really they're really such good. a good pair together because they play off each other. Mm. Really Johnny good. and Susanna. Susanna. Yeah, they're, they're really good at it. Is it like a good cop, bad cop dynamic? It, it, it is. Yeah. 
Cool. <laughs> yeah. Works really well. Works really well. Negotiation theater. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. If there are, if there's no other business before the board, uh, then we can stand adjourned at seven fifteen. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.